Hello. So we've been doing some more tests reading brew strength um, using this refractometer, refractometer, and um, we have some interesting results from cupping too. Uh, a lot of it shows that the extraction rates with um, lighter roasts versus darker roasts are quite different, but it's really something that um, sort of indirectly affects the extraction, which is that lighter roasts have a very different grind dynamic than darker roasts, which tend to uh, create fines, uh, even which fine particles, which have more surface area and extract quicker, um, even in a fairly good grinder. So, and that's simply because of the brittleness of the coffee and the fact that having entered second crack, it, um, the cell structure has different physical qualities. So, but one thing that's interesting to note is that with this light roast, we were getting, um, we were using 11 grams for uh, the correct weight of water, and which should have yielded 1.3% um, extraction. What we were actually measuring was, initially was 105, 1.05% extraction, very under extracted. Now, gr granted, this is not a filtered coffee, and your, but your sediment filters out. So you should get pretty accurate readings by taking a measurement of the top third of the cup, which is why when people cup, they don't bury their spoon down into the, into the grounds to cup. They just skim right off the surface. So what I wanted to check out was how that changed over time, because water is a solvent. So over time, it continues to extract. Now, it's access to the coffee is limited because the coffee's down at the bottom of the cup. So what I did was I created turbulence in the cup by stirring it. Um, that also increases extraction rate. Um, what we found over time was that we were getting a very small amount of further extraction. So we went from 1.05 to 1.07 uh, to 1.13 over the period of an hour. When we stirred the coffee and then let it resettle and sampled from the top third of the cup, we got 1.27, which is more of what our target was. And then what I did was I filtered that to make sure I didn't have any insoluble solids or, or the solids in coffee that cannot be dissolved since this is not a filter brewing method, just to make sure. And we went down to 1.25%, so not a lot of solids in there. So it's just kind of interesting to show that for light roast, I'm going to have to recalibrate my grinder and go a little finer because we're not getting correct extraction and cupping. But it brings up a couple points about water as a solvent over time, uh, about the relationship between roast and grind and how that affects your extraction. Um, and ultimately, what this should really do is, is create um, maybe a new, new way of approaching brewing where your, your um, dwell time, your brew time, that your water and coffee are together, your grind, and everything is, 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 the recipe is adjusted for the particular coffee that you're, you're extracting, whether it's light roast or dark roast. I mean, people do this in espresso because they just get bad results instantly. But with brewed coffee, I don't think people have tailored um, brewing to, um, so much to the particular coffee. One of the points that uh, was I was thinking of during this Roasters Guild uh, retreat this last weekend was Kenya's, if you basically grind coarser and you brew in a French press for a longer period of time, you will extract less acidity from a coffee, even going getting to the same total dissolved solids, um, as you would with a fast extraction and a, and a finer grind, you'll get a more acidic cup in that case than, than this longer recipe. So why aren't we thinking about those things when we're making recommendations on how you brew coffee to your own flavor preference? Um, so that's a possibility. Sorry again for another weird-looking little video, and um, bye.